Hey miss, I am Centaurian Mud Pig and welcome to my little vlog I'm doing. I don't know whether this will turn into a series, but I was thinking of doing a vlog a day. So we'll see how it goes. Anyway, I was looking on new sites and I've noticed that EA have said that they want to get $1 million from DLC. And get to that point from Madden. The new game coming out on Xbox. So, DLC has been a huge controversy ever since Horse Armour, um, all those years ago. And there's a lot of debates whether or not DLC is worth the money or not. But the way the people vote is via their wallets. And currently they're showing that, yes, DLC is worth it. Now, a lot of people will complain about it and say, well, DLC is a load, load of rubbish. But in the end of the day, people are buying it. And for that reason, that means more people are, or more developers, more publishers are creating more DLC, especially day one DLC. And their excuse for that was because uh, if they don't release day one DLC, if they release it one or two weeks down the line, then there's less sales. Now... You can get into a huge debate now whether that is actually adding any value, whether or not they're cutting DLC from the video game, or should I say cutting content from the video game, which is in the game, and re-releasing it as DLC. If you look at any car racing game, you get lots of cars added as DLC extras. And those cars were the originally in the game and then they've been taken out and released later on? Well, who knows? And then the question is... What is a fully complete game compared to when releasing DLC? When I look at the stuff, I can see a base on price and what value is going to add to me. And it's to each individual's opinion. If someone really loves the game, they'll want to spend money on that DLC. If they don't, well, they won't, will they? So it goes down to that, but then here's EA really taking advantage of it. and we won't just say just EA but the feds just done it themselves I'm not sure there's other companies out there we've got uh, Tecmo, Koei Tecmo, Tecmo Koei, whoever they are Dead or Alive series releasing massive amount of costumes for the Dead or Alive series whether or not that had values I do not know but it's not something I've played so lots of people are doing it now the interesting thing is they want to make $1 billion by the end of the year. I don't know whether they're going on about from a specific point, either earning $1 billion in the year, from the beginning of the financial year, and that's what they're planning on doing it, or they're talking about $1 billion from when DLC first started. Chances are they're talking about the financial year, so that's an awful lot of income. Is that going to be actual $1 billion in revenue where it's oh I don't know my business terms is it one million dollars one billion dollars profit or is it one billion dollars in sales that's the question isn't it uh even like even even either or one billion dollars is an awful lot of cash and what are they doing with that cash what value are they bringing back to the gamer because they released a new EA uh, what is it, on the console, on the Xbox One, the one Sony refused to do a monthly subscription access where people can then play video games on their Xbox One for a subscription without buying the game. And then they can decide to buy the game for a discount if they want, I believe. And one of the things what came up with that was Madden F NFL 15, or whatever the number they're sticking on the end of it, is... Not got a demo. Therefore, you are now paying to play a demo of Madden FNL because I'll get to the point on this one. You are time limited to several hours of Madden NFL when you are paying for this subscription. That's what the latest news has been for the last week or two. You are time limited. You are paying a subscription for a time limited demo of Madden NFL. Whether that's going to go through to the other games? Well, chances are I would say probably yes. If they're doing it with that, 
one game, why would they not do it with all the other games? So now they've got people paying for this, early adopters, the ones who have put faith into AA, the ones who have gone out and paid for these subscriptions, if the subscription is already active, to take advantage of them by not telling them the full details of how this system would work. And no wonder Sony didn't bother having it on their platform. They must have realised who would want to pay a subscription for a time-limited demo. EA, shame on you. It's just one of those other strategies you are releasing to screw over your consumers just so that you can generate more profit and keep your shareholders happy. And this is going to go on for a long time. And the only way people are going to stick it to A is to vote by their wallets and to say no I've had enough of this I'm not going to buy that product from EA and it's tough because EA is a major let's face it one of the if not the major game publishers in the world they're the biggest most games come from them I don't think there's many other companies who can threaten EA they're just that big and they've got that big because they released a lot of games. A lot of games released a lot of crap. They release yearly releases of video games for sports every year. With minor additions, you know, people buy it. It's popular. Why would they not do that? Why would EA not release a product on a yearly basis if it's going to earn them a lot of cash? Because the consumer buys it. Supply and demand. Demand is required. So therefore EA is supplying that demand. And the only way we can change this industry. And these practices. Is if we change the supply. But who would do that? Not the average gamer. Not the gamer of the consoles. Console games. Which are lots. Which have a premium on price. We might have the ID Xbox and PlayStation have got the Sony, should we say, or whatever, have got their own indie platform, whatever that's called. But let's face it, indie games compared to AAA titles don't always compete with each other for what they offer. But then the AAA titles, which are a load of crap anyway. And I don't know, I don't know what the answer is other than to boycott when you don't like what you see is to boycott it and to be true to yourself and to be honest to yourself and say that yes I have boycotted not just the entire publisher but maybe that video game or that DLC I refuse to buy that DLC because it does not add value to my gaming experience you know I'm not saying go out and stop buying EA games if you enjoy that game buy it if you enjoy the DLC buy it but if you're buying it and thinking, it's a bit of a waste of cash this, then why am I buying it? Don't buy it. Look for reviews. Decide whether or not that is going to give you value. People, we've got the press out there, the media for the games journalists. There are many. People have their own. Do your research. First of all, is that video game worth the money you're going to put down? Forget the pre-order bonus incentives. Forget the early access fucking discounts of uh, pre-orders or whatever. You know, wait for the reviews to come out. Yeah, I think like with Sims 4, they were putting an embargo on the reviews. No reviews until the day of release. Why would EA do that? on a video game series which is hugely popular is it because it's a cut down version of every other version what's come out before it chances are yes when the sims 4 comes out it's not going to have swimming pools it's not going to have this it's not going to have that it's not going to have the other people will find out yes ea has spent a lot of money creating this new engine but then they've buggered themselves up 
they have not done enough design enough planning to make sure this engine offers what the sims fan wants that's my only fault i can think why ea will not be allowing any reviews before the release of the game so that those fans the sims fans those who bought every other sims game all the dlc from sims 3 and backwards will go out and buy it when they buggered this up with sim city made it online cause more problems ea just don't seem to learn all they care about is selling a lot of products for their shareholders and then they'll fix it later how long it'll take to fix it well they probably shut down the servers by the time they get to that and then it would be taken up for the fans to come up with some work around if they can anyway this has turned into a bit of a rant rather than a vlog so i'm going to leave it here and just just in conclusion if you're going to buy a video game well we'll say if you're going to buy anything do your research first is what you're buying going to be worth the value for how much you're putting down on it and is it going to give you back in return what you actually hope or want from it or need from that product if it does buy it if it doesn't then you might want to look elsewhere or you might want to wait wait till the sales come on wait a few months does it really matter that you need to get it day one and play it day one well when you can wait a few months sales come along or it starts dropping in price and you can play it at a cheaper price and just get as much enjoyment at that time does it really matter that you have to wait a few more months do you have to be the first for some people for the early adopters yes they've already got their mindset there are people out there who will buy ea products because they enjoy what the company provides them and they trust and believe in their company and there's nothing wrong with that but all i'm saying is use a bit more judgment don't have blind faith have a think about it and then vote with your wallet okay guys hope you enjoy this vlog and if you've got any comments on this video if you believe if you've got different opinions on what i said if you want to add to it feel free to add it to the comments below and until next time guys i'm just going to say bye for now